A couple of years ago, NASA played a game of cosmic pool by slamming a spacecraft into an asteroid. The test was to see if we could knock a space rock off course, and it worked. Because after the hit, something unexpected happened. Debris started flying off in strange organized clumps, and one of them could be on a slow motion collision course with Mars. So now, scientists are wondering, did we just prove we can save Earth or accidentally discover a brand new way to mess it up? Asteroids hitting Earth isn't just an entertaining movie drama. It happened before, and it'll happen again. The most famous example? The asteroid that collided with Earth 66 million years ago, on what's now the Yucatan Peninsula. You heard about that one. It reshaped the planet and ended the age of dinosaurs. Scientists think a dino-level hit only occurs once every 100 million years, so we don't have to worry about that one for now. However, in 1908, what is known as the Tunguska event, a mid-air blast over a remote forest, flattened an area the size of a major city. Then, in 2013, a 60-foot asteroid exploded over the city of Chelyabinsk. It didn't hit the ground, but it shattered thousands of windows and sent nearly 1,500 people to the hospital. The shockwave circled the planet twice. It released a huge amount of energy. Yes, a rock as big as a small yacht. Just imagine explaining this to your insurance agent. Funny enough, in the US, your regular homeowner's insurance often covers space junk, from meteors to falling satellite pieces. So if a rock from space crashes through your roof, you're technically covered. Assuming it's not part of an Independence Day-like extraterrestrial invasion. Space agencies aren't only worried about dino-killer rocks. Even bus-sized space boulders can wreak havoc, and there are tens of thousands of them floating around out there. NASA and other space agencies have been busy scanning the skies. So far, they've cataloged over 30,000 asteroids that orbit close to our planet, and more keep showing up. Some of them fly past Earth at distances smaller than the Moon's orbit. A few even sneak up on us with just days of warning. That's why NASA is preparing to launch something called the NEO Surveyor in 2027, a space telescope that uses infrared to spot dark, sneaky asteroids that regular telescopes miss. Basically, it's like giving our planetary defense team night vision. More importantly, the goal isn't just to track them anymore. It's about figuring out how to stop one before it becomes a problem. That was the vision behind NASA's DART mission, short for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. In late 2021, they launched this vending machine-sized spacecraft on a 7 million mile journey to slam into an asteroid at full speed. No explosives, just sensors, cameras, and momentum. The idea was to test and see if crashing into an asteroid at full speed could gently knock it off track. The target was Dimorphos, a 530-foot-wide asteroid moonlit orbiting a bigger asteroid called Didymos. Since the two dance around each other in a neat little binary system, any change in Dimorphos' orbit would be easy to spot from Earth. Basically, it was the perfect test dummy. Close enough to monitor, far enough to be zero risk, and ideal for our first official asteroid punch. Ground telescopes could track every wobble, every shift in real time, like watching a space experiment unfold from your backyard. After about 10 months of space travel, DART finally reached its target. The punch landed squarely on the moonlet's chin, a direct hit. Before the crash, Dimorphos orbited Didymos once every 11 hours and 55 minutes, but after the hit, that orbit shrank by about 33 minutes. In space terms, that's huge. NASA had hoped for a 10-minute change. They got over three times that. That change might sound small, but in orbital mechanics, it's a game changer. Dimorphos' speed slowed by about 2.7 millimeters per second. And yes, that's enough to matter when you're talking about space trajectories over millions of miles. The impact also ejected over 2 million pounds of rock and dust into space roughly the weight of 300 elephants, creating a tail more than 6,000 miles long. It was the first time humanity ever redirected a celestial object on purpose. The data confirmed that a spacecraft, even one without Bruce Willis on board, 
could physically redirect a space rock. Scientists celebrated, probably like in movies, clapping and hugging one another. Earth had officially thrown its first swing in the game of planetary defense. However, in the aftermath, things got strange. The debris didn't just fly off like space confetti. Instead, it grouped up like little rock buddies drifting in formation. Some even stretched out in long, stringy patterns that looked too structured for something that just got smacked at 14,000 miles an hour. And they weren't just drifting. Some fragments were zipping away with increased momentum, up to three times greater than predicted. One group even launched off at an angle that may have given the asteroid a bonus shove, almost like Dimorphos got hit twice. What was supposed to be a clean, controlled bump turned into something messier. And now, scientists are realizing that hunting space rocks might come with surprise side effects. If this had been a real threat, we might have dodged one problem only to create a dozen new ones flying right back at us. And suddenly, researchers are left with new questions. How much force did those fragments actually add? Did we accidentally overdo it? Because when you're trying to push a space rock off a collision course with Earth, extra force isn't always a good thing. Not to mention that some of those fast-moving chunks are still out there, cruising through space with unknown destinations. One cluster might end up hitting Mars in about 6,000 years. Another could drift close enough to Earth to give us a meteor shower in 30. No real danger, just some bonus fireworks, courtesy of a test mission. I hope I'm still around by then, because it's probably going to look really cool. But what likely caused all that chaos? Well, part of it comes down to the asteroid itself. Dimorphos isn't one solid chunk of rock. It's what scientists call a rubble pile. Basically, it's a loose clump of rocks, gravel, and dust all barely held together by gravity. More like a sandcastle than a bowling ball. Instead of soaking up the hit, it crumbled like a cookie. Rocks and dust flew everywhere. The material shifted, collapsed, and shattered in unpredictable directions. That made the push more effective than expected, but not in a good way. Because how an asteroid reacts depends on what it's really made of. And usually, we don't know until it's almost too late. That's why the European Space Agency is sending a follow-up mission called HERA. It's headed to Dimorphos to study the aftermath up close. Its job? Measure the crater, map the shape, figure out how much mass flew off, how much stuck around, and whether Dimorphos is now spinning funny. The objective is to learn from all this. DART showed we could move an asteroid. Hera will help us understand what really happened and how to do it better next time. Because when the threat is real, there won't be time for trial and error. The more we know about what happens after we punch a rock, the smarter we will be next time we need to do it. The DART mission was a historic moment, but it also reminded us how much we still don't know. One push can scatter rocks in every direction, and one small miscalculation can snowball into big trouble. Still, we're learning. Fast. Hera's on the way. Smarter models are on the way. And step by step, we're turning sci-fi defense into real life. So next time the universe throws a rock our way, we'll be ready to punch back with precision. Hopefully. Thank you for watching, and remember to stay on the bright side. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.